Hello, and welcome to Children's Liturgy of the Word for the third Sunday of Lent, already the third Sunday. And this morning, we're going to begin with prayer. Caroline's going to read for our prayer for us. In the name Father, of the Father, Son, and of the Son, and of the Holy, Holy Spirit. Spirit. Amen. Oh God, you show us how to love. May we be better Christians in prayer and in how we treat others. Open our eyes and ears that we will hear your word and be changed by it. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Father, Son. We hope that you're having a um, really wonderful Lent, and we're going to talk this week about um, how you are cleansing your soul and your life um, in preparation for the resurrection of Jesus. And so um, this morning's gospel um, really teaches us what's important and what we should be thinking about during Lent. And so we're going to start, Molly's going to read the gospel for us from John. A reading gospel according to John. Glory, Glory to, to you, O Lord. Since the Passover of the Jews was near, Jesus went unto Jerusalem. He found in the temple area those who sold oxen, sheep, and doves, as well as the money changers seated there. He made it without a court and drove them all out of the temple area with the sheep and oxen and spilled the coins of the money changers and overturned their tables. And to those who sold doves, he said, take these out of here and stop making my father's house a marketplace. His disciples recalled the word of, the, of scripture. The over your house will consume me. At this, the Jews answered and said to him, What sign can you show us for doing this? Jesus answered and said to them, Destroy this temple, and in three days I will raise it up. The Jews said, This temple has been under construction for 46 years, and you will raise it up in three days? But he was speaking about the temple of his body. Therefore, when he was raised from the dead, his disciples remembered what he, that he had said this, and they came to believe the scripture and the word Jesus had spoken. While he was in Jerusalem for the feast of Passover, many began to believe in his name when they saw the signs he was doing. But Jesus would not trust himself to them because they knew, he knew them all and did not need that anyone to testify about human nature. He himself understood it well. Wow. So what was going on in the temple? The temple was a very sacred place. And so back in Jesus' day, the tape, the temple was um, where people came to pray, and it was Passover. Passover was one of the most sacred um, holidays for the Jews. And so it was a place for great prayer and reflection. And so when Jesus got to the temple, what was going on there? People had taken over it with like their sheep and their cows. They were making money off of uh, animals that they were selling to be able to give sacrifices to the Lord. Right. So instead of prayer and um, reflection and, um, you know, talking to God in this sacred place, they had kind of turned it into a marketplace, right? They were selling um, their, their slaughtered animals. They were exchanging coins. And Jesus saw this and he got angry. Are we used to Jesus being angry? No. No. So we, we always teach every week and we've learned, you know, that Jesus loves us that um, he's not angered, right? That he um, just waits. Remember we talk often about how we're that, you know, one sheep might have strayed, but he will go looking. And so even though he actually was angry and what he's teaching us is that sometimes it's okay. It's okay to get angry if you're standing up for what's right. And that's what he was doing. He was standing up for what God expected to happen in that temple. God doesn't want the selling of animals in his temple. He doesn't want you to lose focus of what you should be doing. And he doesn't want you to lose focus of what you should be doing during Lent. And so Jesus was angry and said, listen, this shouldn't be happening here. He stood up for what was right, didn't he? And he said, not only should this not be happening here, I will tear this place down, well, you will tear this place down in three days. I will build it back up in three days. And what did the people say? They didn't believe him. Because how long have they been building it? 46 years. 46 years. They were like, well, there's no way you can do that. But did he mean that that building is what was going to get torn down and rebuilt? No. no. What did he mean? His body. His body. And what do we know happened? He was crucified on that cross and he rose in how many days? 
he was rebuilt in three days, renewed to life in three days. And, you know, back then the Jews were very um, questioning, like, is this the son of God? I mean, we see that, right? Um, and Palm Sunday, when they're laughing, saying, if you're the king of the Jews, come down off that cross. Like, they didn't believe that he said he was who he said he was. And so for, for Jesus to stand up to them and say, this is what should be happening here. And I'm going to show you that I am the son of God. And so once he died and rose from the dead, what did they all say? They were all, they all they believed, all believed him. him. They were like, oh my goodness. Yeah, sure he is. is the son of God. You know, we should have believed. Mm -hmm. I think, you know, especially for um, people right now and for kids, for all of you listening, um, it can be so hard to do the right thing, can it? Mm -hmm. Yeah. And so he, Jesus wants to remind us that we can cleanse our relationship with God during this time. We have these 40 days of Lent, Lent to cleanse our relationship with God, just like they cleaned out that marketplace, right? And rebuilt it. We can do that with our own selves. We can clean out the bad, the yucky stuff, all the things that bring us down and bring us farther from God. We can clean all that away and we can build ourselves back up during these days and build up our relationship with God. Do you have any times that you've had to like stand up like Jesus did for what was right? Um, I think um, we've kind of made a good group of friends that really aren't like they don't choose to do bad things. Um, but sometimes if someone is like saying something about someone else or something and you know it's wrong, sometimes like we say something to them and then they realize that someone else would have not done that, but they wanted to do it because they thought that they might have done it. And so they wanted to like kind of like be cool or whatever because they thought that it was cool to talk about other people but after people start telling you like not to talk about other people and not to be rude to them and stuff they realize it and they like get behind you in like a line of like good things right so sometimes just being the first one to stand up and say something or do the right thing then the other people are like oh Wow, we're going to do that too. And you know, some people might be upset with you. Some people might get angry, but God says, that doesn't matter. You have to do the right thing. I will always be there for you. And this week I heard Father Philip give a very special message. And in it, he said, um, at the end of the day, when you go to your room and you're all alone, who is still there? God. That's right. God is still there. And so no matter what happens in your life, God is always there and you always have him to turn to no matter what happens. So even when your friends might be upset when you stand up for the right thing, or they might say, oh, you're so uncool. I know recently, Molly, you had something happen with somebody with their phone. Do you want uh, to tell that they story? They were texting these initials that did not mean very good things. And I asked her what it meant and she knew what it meant and she knew what it meant, but even after she knew what it meant and she knew some, it was not the best like choice of words, she still continued to like type it and like send it to all of these people. And I just confronted her like, those aren't, you shouldn't be texting that. And, like, if you can't say it out loud, you shouldn't be texting it either. And even like in initials, everybody still knows what it means. Even if you're just typing out the first letter of each word. That's right. Very good. So, you know, that was a hard thing where Molly stood up to her and she's a friend and said, you know, do you even realize what you're saying in those, in those letters? And I think sometimes people don't even realize the significance, but it might only take one person saying to her, wow, that's not good. Like you shouldn't be typing that. Would you say that out loud? That might be all she needed to stop doing that in the future. Mm -hmm. And so that's what God wants us to do. Stand up and do the right thing and speak out when others aren't, just like Jesus did in the temple. 
I want you to use these days and these weeks ahead as we finish up Lent to cleanse your temple, to get cl gl grow closer to God, and to use this time to think about, am I doing the right thing? Am I standing up for the right thing? And am I speaking out in Jesus' name? All right, we're going to end today with a prayer. Father, Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Spirit. Amen. Father of mercy and compassion, transform our hearts on our Lenten journey. May we always remember to pray, to sacrifice, and give to those in need. We ask this through Christ our Son, who died and rose for us. Amen. 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 In the name of the Father, Father and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Spirit. We hope you have a wonderful Lenten season. We hope you grow closer to God every day. See you in a few weeks.